Hi there, welcome to Odonet. Today I want to talk about uh, the most recent uh, release of a Bower package for the ArcGIS API for JavaScript, uh, which is kind of cool. You can do some really neat stuff with. And you can find the Bower package on Bower's uh, website uh, by searching for packages and just search for ArcGIS-JS-API. And it is hosted at a, a repo on GitHub that you can kind of look over and it's got some uh, instructions in here to direct you uh, to the Bower site. I had to install Bower. Uh, it's got this here, which I'll copy right here so we can use this in a second. This is how you install uh, the Bower package to your application. And it tells you a couple of the requirements, uh, the dependencies that it has, and a couple other uh, minor details. Now the dependencies that it has are interesting here because a few of these are patch dojo repos and essentially they're just patched for stuff that's specific to uh, things that Ezra needs out of the dojo library or to add support for, for um, some extended uh, internationalization stuff. Now, nothing too critical but if you want to stay uh, stable with what the API is using these are the uh, dependencies you're going to want to use. It's also got a link here to a recommended guide which uh, I'll talk about in a second. Uh, it goes over how to do the build for with the Bower packages in both the Dojo and RequireJS. But right now, if we look at the instructions how to install it, it was basically um, paste it here. So Bower install ArcGIS JS API, and let's go ahead and let that run. We'll give it a second here, and I'll be right back. One thing you're going to have here is it's going to ask you um, when you do this to resolve a dependency. So Dojo has a Bower package already out there um, that it will try to default to, but you want to use the Bower package that Ezri provides. So just when you get this question here, uh, just press one. And if you want, if you did a Bower init and you had uh, saved a Bower.json file, just add a exclamation mark, uh, bang to the end of the one here. Okay, so that takes a couple minutes to go ahead and download all the dependencies, but you can see here what it went ahead and did is it downloaded the ArcGIS-JS-API uh, repo um, and also downloaded all these other dependencies for it and installed it in a folder called Bower Components. So if we uh, look at the listing of Bower Components, you can see that we have uh, all the dependencies in here. Uh, now this is a little trick here because at this point what you would need to do if we look at a um, kind of dojo config that you would need to make, you would need to make a dojo config for your application that would point to the Bower Components folder. And actually in this case here, let me fix this here, uh, it did not install in a uh, Esri folder, it installed in a ArcGIS-JS-API folder. So just keep that in mind when you're using the Bower package for your application. This is how you would probably style your Dojo config to do everything for you. However, we have a, there's a couple of recommended ways you can do that, which you can find in the uh, JS API resources repo. So if we go to the, uh, the Dojo repo, for example, uh, you're going to see that there is a um, some instructions here on how to install everything. But let's just go through and look at what that looks like here. So let's get out of here. If I can spell. There we go. Okay, so we have a bower.json here. And what this bower.json is saying is that we want to install the JavaScript API as a dependency, but we're going to install it into a folder called Esri. Um, that way we don't have to remap the uh, folder name. And we also have the resolution for us to point to the uh, Esri patched Dojo repo. So that's kind of cool. And another thing you can do, oops, don't want to do that just yet. Another thing you can do is that Bower uh, can install to custom folders. So instead of installing to a Bower components folder, we can have it installed directly into the source folder. And that is done with a a file called uh, .bower rc. So let's open that up. So what we're saying here is that the directory that we want to install to is called a source folder. Now let's look at what's in our source folder. 
In this case, right now we have a uh, app folder with a main.js file, and this is pretty basic, just going to create a map. We have a package.js file, and this is just going to tell the Dojo build system um, that's an AMD uh, package. And we have a package.json that just tells the Dojo build system to look in the package.js file to find the, um, the package information, telling you that it's an AMD uh, module application. All right. So now what we can do is that in here we can do a Bower install. And it's going to go ahead and install everything as we expect it to. So let's go ahead and uh, let this do its thing, and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's gone ahead and installed the dependencies. Uh, looks like I have to update my Bower. You can ignore that. And it's installed them directly in the source folder. So now if we do a uh, list out the source folder, everything's already in there. Now that means is that we don't have to set up the uh, dojo config to point to particular folders because the we already have the app folder here and we're going to ask for Esri map so it's just going to look directly in the Esri map folder. So there's no remapping of anything that we need to do here, which is kind of cool because we can use that for doing our builds. So if we look at the uh, build profile, okay, so here are the packages. So basically when we define our packages, we only have to say that we have an app package, digit, dojo, dojo x, and so on, all the way down to Esri. And this is just pointing directly to the uh, folders that are in the source folder. So now what we can do is let's uh, just look at the application real quick. So it's going to be going on port 8000. So let's come over here and refresh. Okay, I'll go to my source folder. And you actually see all the files being served up. So these are all the individual uh, AMD files and the CSS files that are getting served up for the application to load. So here we go. So it's an unbuilt application in here. And you can do your measurements. We just added a uh, little measurement uh, digit in here, just kind of show an example of stuff you can do. All right, cool. So let's stop that. So now what you can do is uh, let's do an npm install to install all the little dependencies that the um, build file is going to want to do. Give that a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so we've done the npm installs here, and we did that because there is, in this repo, a uh, grunt file. And what this grunt file is going to do is it's going to have uh, all the methods and everything set up so that you can do uh, a build of the application. So it's got stuff here to copy the file over, and that's just going to copy the index HTML. And we have a... Um, show it where the release directory is going to be. We point to our build profile when we do the dojo build. Uh, the source is going to be the dojo.js file and give it a base path for source. So it just says here, so all we have to do is, uh, based on this grunt task, is run grunt build. So we'll run grunt build and we won't bother with provost. We'll just let it run and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've gone ahead and run the dojo build. And it's uh, went ahead and created a file for us that's in the dojo.dojo.js file, and it's compressed our entire application into a single file. So if we uh, list out here, we have a disk directory now. So let's go ahead and run that lo local Python server again. However, this time um, we are going to go to the disk directory. If we come back over here, we only served out a single JavaScript file and a few other uh, resources, but no other JavaScript files are served out. So we've got a single file being served for application at this point. All right. And everything still works as expected. And there's the mythical single file build that you can get using the Bower package of the ArcGIS JavaScript API with Dojo. Okay, so that's not the end of it. You can also do this with RequireJS. So if we the uh, files here, and let's go ahead and um, 
run the npm install. And I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So it's gone ahead and installed the uh, npm dependencies for us here. Let's go ahead and uh, in this case, it's got the same stuff that the Bower repo had with the Bower RC file as a directory that points to source as a Bower JSON file that's got a dependency for the ArcGIS API as well as RequireJS. And it's got some other uh, development dependencies for um, text DOM ready has an IETN. And these are the RequireJS plugin counterparts to the Dojo plugins. And uh, we'll talk about why we have those in a second. So let's do a Bower install of the Bower uh, dependencies for this application. And again, I'll, oh, that was pretty quick. So I've already installed them. Let's uh, check out the source directory. Okay, there we go. So we've got everything in here. Uh, we have uh, all the dependencies that came with the ArcGIS API as well as the plugins that we talked about. So what I can do in here is I can run the local Python server. Let's come back over here, refresh the page. Okay, so here's the application. You can see all the individual AMD files being loaded. However, these are being loaded using RequireJS's loader. This is not using the Dojo loader to load this application. So let's uh, close all this stuff up here. And let's go to the console. Let me see RequireJS that version. So this is using the RequireJS loader. And again, everything simply works. All right, cool. So let's try and do a, a build of this using the RequireJS optimizer. Now there are some uh, caveats when using RequireJS optimizer to build your application. And some of those notes can be seen in the grunt file. Okay, so what we have here is the grunt file. Uh, so you build the application out. Let's come down a little bit more, try and find the comments here. Uh, so this is just the support um, task. And what this is going to do is basically just going to copy uh, these packages over uh, to the disk directory. It's not going to do any build with them. Because when the RequireJS optimizer runs, it, um, it just optimizes the application but doesn't actually copy over all the files the way the Dojo build system does. So here we have a task for doing a uh, single file build, and we're going to try and uh, build it out to an uh, app main.js file. And these are configurations for uh, has.js that's similar to what Dojo uses. However, it, it doesn't look like these actually are working as expected at the moment. So that might need a little bit of uh, investigation there. But the more important notes are down here about setting up the paths and setting up your includes and your excludes. So basically, the RequireJS optimizer, when it runs across something like the um, Dojo text plugin, it's actually going to try and execute that plugin during the build process uh, to do what it needs to do. However, uh, the loader plugins for Dojo have some references to things like a document and window in them, which are not in a node environment. So when they're run in the RequireJS optimizer, they're going to fail. Uh, the reason they don't fail in the Dojo build system is that the Dojo build system has some stubbing uh, for those loaders. So it handles um, the fact that uh, it runs inside of a node environment and it won't fail because it provides stubs for those plugins. So we're going to try and kind of mimic that here. So what we're doing is that we're saying for Dojo text, we want to load the RequireJS equivalent of that plugin. And the same for IETN here, as well as the DOM ready. Now, uh, when we come up here, what we're saying, for example, the DOM ready, is that even though during the build system, we use the RequireJS version of DOM ready to, to run it, uh, we're going to exclude that package from the single file build. So it's going to, when it runs the application, it's going to dynamically load the Dojo DOM ready package. And the same goes for Dojo has. The Dojo has plugin is a pretty hefty plugin, and it can't simply be replaced with the uh, required just equivalent. Uh, there are some other uh, things happening in the Dojo query module, as well as the Dojo X GFX module, 
that means that we don't want these packages to be uh, loaded uh, during the build. So by putting this empty colon here, it's going to not um, include those packages into the single file build. And XDAL and DGrid have some other uh, stuff happening with them when they, they fail within the required just optimizer build. So that's how you're going to do this build system. So it's kind of a, uh, some things you need to be aware of when you're working with the required JS optimizer and uh, building the application. And the excludes, you may have to play around if you run across certain issues when you're using a library that it errors out during the required JS optimizer build. Uh, just exclude that module from the application, uh, the build process, not the application, exclude it from the build process, and it won't get spit out into the single file build. And then you're going to want to play around with the include here. When you're building your application and files are getting loaded dynamically that you did not explicitly say to exclude or give them an empty path, and you still want them in that single file build, then you can just add them here to the include. So, for example, Esri Digit Attribution um, is dynamically loaded, so we just include it and it doesn't break the build or anything. Uh, so what we can do here is just run grunt build and let that run and I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So the required JS optimizer went ahead and ran. So if we uh, list out the contents of the disk directory, so our grunt task went ahead and copied over all the files that we wanted it to copy over. And let's go ahead and run the uh, local Python server here. And let's switch from the source directory to the disk directory. And let's see what we get. Okay, so here's our built application. And let's look at what files came over. So here's our app main.js file. And this has been uh, optimized with the required JS optimizer. And let's see if it's going to tell us here. Okay, so my, my Chrome dev tools aren't going to tell us all the JavaScript files that had to come over. But if we look over here, we can see that uh, we had to load the has.js file here dynamically, i18n, um, some GFX modules because we had to exclude them, as well as the um, Dojo query stuff here. That's what the selector and the resources, actually not the resource, but selector is coming from. And uh, a couple of GFX uh, modules in here. So not a whole lot of stuff that had to be dynamically loaded. So you can get pretty close to a single file build using the required JS optimizer and the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. Uh, just not a perfect uh, single file build. It's just a couple limitations you need to bear, be aware of. If you have to integrate the ArcGIS API into a required JS um, system that you might already have in place. If you don't have one in place and you're just starting from scratch, then you really are probably better off just going with a straight dojo system because you will get that single file. Uh, there's a few tricks you can do to kind of, so you don't have to load all the excess dojo modules that aren't being used and you just want one single JavaScript file and one single CSS file. Uh, you can do that and have it deploy your application uh, completely and fully optimized. So that's something to consider as well. So that's it. Uh, Take a look at this particular repo here in the on uh, Esri's GitHub site. The JS API resources repo has a Bower folder with some, uh, like I said, the examples for Dojo and Require JS, a lot of links and everything else here uh, to help you out. And if you have any questions, just uh, you know, let me know. Thank you.